So finally, the last thing we want to touch on is we've looked at strings, utilizing static strings uh, and acids, but a lot of the time you're going to want to work with some sort of dynamic strings. So you want to be able to create your strings during as the game's running. So you can't give a translator a full string and get that translated. You need to have a way to communicate with them. How can I generate these dynamic strings? So for example, as a programmer, you might do something very simple where you just add the strings together concatenation. So here's an example where we're saying the red pen. So we're saying the, and then we've got a color and an item. And for English, that would work. We could just do the plus color plus item. But then when we go to Spanish, we have an issue. Those words have swapped around. So now it's item plus color. So we could try to write code where we switch them around, but then we're going to have to write code for different languages and it's going to get more and more complicated. So the next thing you might try to do is say, well, I'm going to do string.format. So I want a single string, which is already a good start. And I'm going to put placeholders in and then a translator can just swap them around. And that's good, but the translator is missing context. What is zero and what is one? So you then have to communicate across to them what those are. So it'd be much better if we could put that information into the actual string. So we could just put color item, what we call named placeholders. And that, that's uh, the very basics of what a, a smart string is. What we call smart strings is that we allow you to put more context in there so you can give them names. So they don't just have to be indexes, but you can also do a lot more with them. So that they are basically an alternative to string.format, but a lot more powerful where you could put logic into them. Uh, and the first thing you often want to use them for in localization is what we call plurals. So for example, if you want to say, I have a certain number of items, that the word for items is going to change depending on the language. So in English, it could be, I have an item. And then if I have multiple, it would be items. So put an S on the end. But if you switch to other languages, it could become more than just a case of a singular and plural. You could have multiple different versions depending on the number. So for example, Welsh has five different plurals, I believe. I think Russian has three or four. But then if you go to Japanese, it's, it tends to just be one. So you need a way to be able to specify that in the string and let a translator be able to say what those different plurals are. And that's what the smart string system can do. So here we have an example of using plurals. We have a named placeholder, which we call number of items. We pass in what's called plural. So we tell it it's a plural. And then we give it the different arguments. And here we have an item called cost of item. And then we use height, that's um, colon C. So it tells it to use the currency symbol. And you can see here, it comes, becomes like this. So these, these smart strings let you start to form up the logic in the string. So you don't have to write any custom code. And then there's context in there that you can give to the translator so they can change it for that language. So a little bit more about what a smart string looks like. Uh, it has um, a few parts to it. It's first got the selector. So the selector is responsible to actually getting that data. So if you pass in, say, an instance to a class, the number value that you might want to use might be a property in the class. So you could do like, you can do like dot notation, like C sharp. So you can do like my class dot item dot value. And so it'll go and it'll use different selectors. It might use reflection. It might use some other type of selection method in order to get that data. The next thing you pass in is then the formatter name. So how do I turn this into a string? And so we have lots of different formatters. So plural is one. This one's a choose formatter. And the documentation has all the information in the different formatters. And you can also create custom formatters and custom selectors, which are really useful. So for example, in this example, you're, we're saying choose, and then it's going to say, if the value is one, I'm going to put this text. If it's two, this text, three, this text. And you could also have an optional other. So it's kind of like a way to translate an enumeration. So you could then put the translations in here. And the translators can then just work with that and change one each, each one for the language. Uh, and there's all the types of logic. So for example, on a, if we have a Boolean open and close, so you could use that. The translator can then say like the door is open, the door is closed. You can do date stuff. You can do more complex stuff. It's a bit, this one gets a little bit more advanced and a translator might even struggle with this one as well. But you can, if you wanted to put logic in there to pick different values based on it. Uh, and then there's, there's plurals. So plurals are based on a, um, a standardized way of 
that's say uh, defining a plural where you can say what i'll show you we have the value we have the keyword plural and then we have different arguments so it goes from zero one two few many other and these are the terms that are used in this standard so if you go to the standard which is here and it's also in the documentation it'll tell you for example how many plurals this language has and the values that are in those those categories uh, and the rules these rules are already implemented so you don't have to write any code to do all this but the translators have this information and it's a standardized way of defining plurals so they they have a, a good chance of understanding how to set up those plurals if you use them you don't have to create your own system uh, other things it can format is lists so if you have for example a list of items and you want to put that out to a string and you instead of having to do that yourself like adding all the list items together you can use these list formatters and that lets you define like the separators you can have the last character such as am to who it's saying you picked up and then it says the item separated by comma with an and in and that lets the translator be able to then translate that so it'll put the list out the same way for you the idea is to avoid writing as much code as possible when you're doing any sort of string handling so that later on when you localize it you don't hit any issues you can fix them all in your translations so let's finally have a look at how you would do a smart string so we're going to go back to unity and now i'm going to create a, a new new uh, document uh, and we're going to add a label and we're going to call this um i'd say apple input no apple label so this is going to be connected to some localization data again so we need to go back to our tables string table and we're going to add a new entry and we'll call it apple's label and in that we'll say you have and then we can use a named placeholder so we're going to call it apple counts uh, so we're not going to do any plurals yet we're going to start simple so first we just should say you have a number apples so we'll close that and go back and we're going to link that up so we do add binding and like before we just go to localize string select entry we called it apples label so there it is select that and you can see here you have apples or the apple count apples and if we add that binding you can now see it's not currently doing anything with it because it doesn't know what apples count is or apple count is so what we can do now is we can define that so go back and edit the binding and in here we can add a variable so we could add an integer variable and we'll call that we need to give it the same name so apple counts you get a value uh, and next thing we need to do is we tell it it's a smart string so we just enable that box so we took preview you can see now this is what it would look like and it's also doing it there so it's saying you have two apples preview so now let's make it a plural because one apples is not correct we want it to say an apple thing and then in here instead of just making it a string we can pass a formatter in to give it more information so we can do colon uh, plural so it's telling it's a plural and then the next thing is what would be the singular version so it'd be an apple and the pipe symbol means that to separate it uh, and if it was more than a singular value we would pass the current value in which is what that bracket open close bracket means and then we would say apples so we delete that bit so now we click preview an apple if i change it to five five apples so we've set that up now it's now ready to be well, it's now a plural uh, so we can now import some translations that I made earlier so like before we go import CSV merge and I've got some that I've already created for apples so we go here there's the one we just did we've now got a French version a Japanese version you can see is a lot simpler it doesn't need to do any extra plural and a Spanish version as well so we close that down we can now switch between them oh we also need to mark them as smart like we did before so we go back to the table sorry see this s symbol it indicates it's a smart string that's the only smart string so you may when you're translating you may not need to use smart strings for every single language you may only need it to work on certain ones you have that option so if we click here we can just enable it for all of them so now if i go back 
you can see it's now applying the smart string. Oh, and it's doing a pseudo localization on it as well. So finally, we want to just actually be able to change it in the game so with a script. So I want to change that with a slider. So I'm just going to show you how you'd interact with those bindings in code. Because a lot of people want to know, how do I change that Apple value in Metro game? I can't really go into the build and do it. So what we'll do is we'll connect it to a slider. So we'll call it Apple Inputs, I think. And that's Apple Label. I'm just going to save that. So we're going to create a script. Call it Apples. And now I'm going to go to Visual Studio. Here's our script. So in here, we are going to do, we want a reference to our UI document. So we can actually get to it. And in start, we'll do it. So we only, with UI toolkits, um, you don't need to poll all the time. We can just set up these events and callbacks. So we, we only have to do it in the start method here. So I want to get a reference to my slider. So that's going to be, oh, it's been clever. So it's going to be, was it Apple's input or Apple input? Oh, you've forgotten. Apple label, uh, Apple input. All right, let me go. Uh, and then we want a reference. Oh, <laughs> okay. AI makes it a bit too easy these days. So I want to get a reference to my binding. So that was inside the label. So that's going to be label dot get binding. And it's bind bound to the text property. So we're going to do get the binding from text and we're going to cast it as a localized string. So that's given us the, the localized string that we applied to that binding earlier. So inside of that, we want to get that variable. So we're going to say Apple count, that's going to be the name of our variable. It calls label binding. Uh, and then if we do open the square brackets, we can give it the name of that variable we have. So Apple hyphen count. Uh, and that's going to be cast as an int variable. So finally, we want to apply that value to the slider. So it's already done it for me. <laughs> so when the value changes, we're going to apply it to apple count dot value. So we're getting the slider. When the value changes, we're going to apply it to that variable that was in the binding. So let's go back to Unity now. We're going to go and create a new scene. Okay. I'm going to add a UI document. We're going to link up that plural into it. I'm going to also add the script we just created. Connect that. Press play and hope it works. Oh, I think I had a name wrong there. One second. <laughs> I go back to my UXML. So it's called Apple Imports an Apple label. Oh, in my script, I used the wrong variable, the name. Let's go back to the script for a second. You can see I called them both Apple input. So it's Apple label. There we go. I'm gonna go back to Unity. Oh, so now I've been playing. There we go. So I can drag this slider and it will update it. I can switch the language. So we've now localized it and we've got the plurals working. So that brings us to the end of this uh, quick sort of overview. Well, sort of quick. <laughs> overview of uh, localization and UI toolkit.